Hello everybody, I'm Conquering History Games, and welcome back to, I believe, part 13 of my Black Army campaign here in Hearts of Iron for the New Order. Okay, Joys of Fine Dining. What's going on here? <clears throat> the room seemed as if it were alive. Men threw their head back in laughter and hysterics at jokes that only friends would understand. Candles adorned the shelves of the walls, giving the room a golden glow. It sat nestled awkwardly between the antiques and knickknacks that occupied the space the other 364 days a year. The beating heart of the room was found at the center, a wall of men surrounding him, hanging on to his every word. Yuri Galishnikov's brooming voice was unmistakable. So, I have Kalishnikov standing beside me. Reeks like dead deer and alcohol. I'm trying not to puke up that morning food, though it would look <laughs> look the same as it did when I ate it when it came out. Am I right? I know you've seen the stuff. Anyway, he's trying to tell me. He says... Yuri, I think I hit a deer on the way here. And I turn to him and I say, keep keep in mind, he, he stinks like death itself. And I say, oh no, that was just Mushrinko wandering out to the mental facility again. <laughs> the table exploded into laughter, save for the man at the head of the table whose mind was fixated on the drink before him. Suddenly, the door to the tavern threw itself open. Companions, companions, where is Yuri? Galishkov pushed his chair back and stood, his demeanor quickly shifting from jovial to serious. What is it? I am here. I don't know. I don't know. I just, I was out hunting out northward, you know? I saw the Black Army. They, they, were, they were all in this massive formation in the city square. I didn't think much of it and continued on my way, but I heard shots and men started falling. As the exhausted man struggled to catch his breath, Yuri turned to his ally, Stefanov, hoping to solidarity, but found the man sm unbothered, smiling as he sipped his drink. What were you saying, Yuri? Hmm... Let's see here. Uh, what do we got here? Mobilize airborne units. Not gonna be doing that. Ah! What's that for? Yes, yes, I'm gonna do that. Alright, it's my phone reminding me of a certain thing I need to get done. Um, okay, so what's going on here? We got 33 more days, it looks like, until we're gonna be, uh, actually ready to go here. We can, uh... Start the war. Okay, we're not getting the civilian and military boost. Let's grab that and that. Okay, hold on. We're having a little issue with the bar. Hold on. What's happening here? Okay, hold on. We're going to come back. Okay, we're back. Sorry about that. Okay. Um. Okay, where was I? Where was I? Uh, yeah, yeah. So we're... 33 days away from the war actually starting uh, with the East uh, in turn, but I was wanting to look at the logistics of the helicopters. Yeah, we don't know. I guess, that, yeah, there really just must be some kind of bug with that. But we're making how many a day at the moment? Uh, we're making 11 helicopters a day. Not too shabby, all things considered. Uh, let's get building some more. This, oh, did I miss an area with the infrastructure? No. No, it just, just hasn't been built yet, but... Yeah, I think we're gonna pretty easily run over these clowns. Uh, cool, these are totally trained up. If we look here, one of them, with, like, the template. Uh... How many... Okay, this one's actually completely... They're full on the helicopters. Yeah, wow, we might actually be able to have to do it. War on the horizon, winner take all. Okay, well, can we get this done in time? 96% of the way there. Daily gain is 1.05%, so we just need like another week. But I think they're about to declare war on us. Uh, any day now. I think. Come on, come on. Alright. Cool, cool. Ready to go. What's this? Large river crossing, whatnot. And if we don't get the inferior enemy modifier or whatever, what's going on here? Uh, these are in the rear so they can keep training. We'll be fine. Can I actually maybe get another ten of those out? Because we, you know, as long as we stay mobilized off of increasing the military budget, we should be okay. So do that. We'll be able to have another full 24 ready to go here soon. Cool, another air assault level finished. Um. Hmm. 247 there. Uh, what's this? Acclimatization factor. I think uh, coming over here and making this better might be good. Advanced Special Forces training. 
Let's get that, and uh, this could be a bit better, but let's increase the max fa factories in a state. It's going to open up some more possibilities for me. What's this that's available? Oh, here we go. Begin the invasion. Uh, we declare the war. Our preparedness is, you know, enough. 29 days. Yeah, they might have already started. And these two should be going to war soon as well. Okay, now that I've got the scout heli, though, I think I also can come over here. No, it's still not there. What the heck? I could have sworn they had some sort of recon thing. I don't understand. Huh. Well, the war in the west has begun. Place your bets, place your bets. Tumen definitely has more factories. Oh, and more divisions as well. Yeah, they're in a really good position. This old Khrushchev might be a bit of a problem. Nice overrun! That's what I like to see. Okay, we're gonna. So the key here, I think, to the whole war is going to be uh, getting the encirclement here around the lake. Uh, you know, trapping those divisions there. And uh, then that'll, that'll be that, really. That's also when we're going to move these 14 divisions in. Let's kind of start putting them a little bit in position. Mm-hmm. Okay, looks good so far. Can I break through these? No, I can't. That's fine, that's fine. We'll do this. I want you to come down here, like so. Alright, and there it is. That's the encirclement. Got it. Barely, right here. And we're going to put another layer to it. Taking the hydroelectrical station. That's helping with the consumer good factories. We're down to, let's say we have 0%, and yet somehow we still have 7 factories here. Yeah, there we go. Every single factory we have is now being... Uh, is is now being used just for the war. So much for the anarchy, huh? Anarchy, my dear. Get those advanced main battle tanks going. Man, maybe I should do helicopters more often. <laughs> like you can't build the whole army around them, but if you can afford to get them, they're just so damn fast. That's the deadliest part of them. Uh oh, got a little bit surrounded right here. That's okay. Just come this way. Picked up that air base. Once you coming over here, uh, you're still working on coming this way. Very good. What's this division doing? Yeah, keep 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 going east. Fast as you can. There we go. Nice encirclement. That's what I like to see. Okay, now we've got to change some of this up a little. Uh-huh. Like that. Boom. Okay, and then you, we got to delete your order and make you come, like, this way. Ah, what's going on here? Something like that. Okay. Good, 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 good. They're already at 76,000 casualties compared to my 7,000. Pretty damn good ratio. Not, not really anybody can complain about that. I think once we just get this helicopter into Magadan, that'll be that. This is all is probably actually way more than I needed to do. Is this that Soviet waltz? Yep, yeah, Soviet assault waltz. Guess was checking. What's this decision available? Oh, yeah, the foreign instructors? Yes. Yes, indeedy, feed the needy. Still a widespread chromiasm. Just we're certainly never gonna get down to the Spartan stuff in the far bottom. Let's see, we're at 89%. Yeah, I'm sure Magadan will be enough. And there we go. Uh, I think Spain's blown up now, as it does. Hmm. Let's get you coming up this way and then towards Kamchatka. 
Order Magadon captured, and that ought to be that. No, actually, just 99%. But so if I just take one tile anywhere, we've got it. So just uh, keep coming this way. Okay, pin that guy down. And that'll do it. Peace conference is over. Is that us? Yep. The best laid plans of mice and men often go awry. So you gotta have no plans. Anarchy! Alright. Time to get ready for the Western War. Which shouldn't be much trouble at all. Pretty sure it's gonna be against uh, Khrushchev. And we can watch Spain blow up now. Integrate all the things. Actually, I think we're going to not quite have enough. We're going to be a little short. No, no, we had exactly enough. Uh, and then we can also come over here. Siberian reunification will give me stability and every experience. And I think a new tree. Awesome. Oh, we can start exerting influence in Kazakhstan. Sure, that's fun. Military intervention, we just need 50 political power. Okay, so that's what we're going to do. Um, so since that's the case, let's get y'all here. It's the National Republic. They've only got six to seven divisions, that's right. Yeah, uh, not not going to be any, any sort of problem at all. Let's put you here. You're going to do that. All right, and then that's all we got to do, really. What can't be reclaimed? Oh, there it is. In a war, there are no winners or losers. Only victims. Yeah, so there they all are. Federal government will probably still win, though. They always seem to. Hmm. Hope you've been paying attention. And so they do. So it looks like this is a setup. We have a hot-headed child, not someone fit to lead us into the greatest struggle we ever fit face. I cannot in good faith allow Mr. Galenskov to guide the most important of battles. I beg this body to put the people first and remove Mr. Galenskov immediately. The people of the Security Council shared nervous glances between each other, but there was not one people, as Stefan Stepanov referred to. The Free Territory had instead split into two increasingly threatening camps, the people and the army. We need calm, rational thinking. I'm sorry, young companion. Is that a reference to Thanos? I'm sorry, little one. So we set him up. Played him like a damn fiddle. Uh, okay. So these guys are getting in position, right? Good. Uh, a lovable dictator. Well, that's nice. Uh, let's do the charismatic as well. That was actually really dumb. I shouldn't have done that. He's in my general. Okay, Yuri Galenskov only wanted to, wanted to go down kicking and screaming. That's how he always pictured it. There was no alternative. He would die accompanied with his closest allies for something they believed in, for something good. If not, he would be there when Russia as a whole was liberated from the state. Somewhere deep in his heart, somewhere where even he could not find it, what Yuri wanted nothing more was to die free. To not share the same fate as his father or his father before him. Siberia was cold and unforgiving. It was something he learned at a young age and kept with him all his life. It was a place that cared little for want or wishes. Siberia delivered. Galanskov, the caged anarchist, paced around in the back of the transport vehicle. Shackles followed him, rattling, reminding him he was enslaved, taunting him. Their metallic jingle, a cruel laugh. How funny. An anarchist locked in a box. Very funny indeed, Ivan. Hold on. Yuri was often called an annoyance by his contemporaries. He didn't see it that way. He saw through their posturing. They were scared. Scared of what he had accomplished, something that he had set in motion even if he would rot in prison. His message had been made and the world would never be the same. However, if his reputation was an annoyance, might as well live up to that. He pounded on the glass, separating the rear of the vehicle. In response to Yuri's commotion, the driver simply turned on the radio, playing with some sort of announcement from Stepanov. <laughs> Companions of the Free Territory, today my heart breaks. We have already experienced the turbulent preceding days and further tragedy has befallen our people. The transport vehicle of Yuri Galenskov while traveling from Novosibirsk to Kansk was lost. Yuri's heart stopped. I do not have all the answers, but I am committed to living up to the legacy of our honored comrade. Realization began to set in, prompting Yuri to scream and to continue to pound on the divider between himself and the driver. Between himself and death, a bright light extinguished. So we'll now change trees and we get Ivan Stepanov, who becomes our new head of government. It lowers political power, but we get less. We're using less consumer good factories. 
But this is still going to say the same. It's just a security council, you know? Peacekeeping, huh? Yeah. Okay, well, there we have it. Got our brand new tree. I don't think we're going to do nukes uh, by any means. Although, academic... You know, the academic boost is fun. But I don't think we're going to get involved in that. The king of the anarchic wastes. It has been a long road to reach this pinnacle of military and social achievement. From the trivia, oh, that's fun, civil war in Yemen. From the pinnacle of military, uh, from the tributaries of the Ob to the shores of Magadan, and from the streets of Tomsk to the peaks of Verskonsenenki, that's just saying we're losing our wonders. Our black army stands triumphant over the entirety of Siberia. Ivan Stepanov has taken our glorious effort to heights undreamed of, and he now reigns as the uncrowned king of this vast territory. Uh, okay. Very, very nice. Uh, so how much political power are we getting? We're actually losing almost a full point a day because of all the integrations we're doing. But it's okay because we're not going to be able to go to war for another year and a half anyway. So I think we'll be able to eat up Kazakhstan pretty easily. And, uh, in addition to that, let's start getting some more, once again, some more infantry divisions. Uh, because we're going to have a huge front we have to cover if we hold Kazakhstan. Uh, against whoever ends up, uh, you know, unifying it. The last real propaganda that Theodore had seen were ones from the Bukharin days, proclaiming the imminent defeat of the Germans and the triumphant Red Army marching forward. Uh, they used to be everywhere, plastered on every wall, smashed between every door. Now they fluttered in the streets, stuck on trees, or burned for warmth. Those unlucky enough to be stuck outside for the night stacked them on as blankets against the Siberian night. Fyodor reminisced the days when a few unlucky posters ended up as toilet paper. They supposed that it was better than leaves. It was strange, then, to see a new poster in Novosibirsk. This was not in the crisp red that Bukharin's poster had. Now, with a closer look, Fyodor could see the imperfections in the printing. Color bled over lines, figures in the background were hardly more than black smudges. It was crude, but nevertheless a propaganda poster. What it depicted was strange. In the center was a man on his knees, bowing his head forward. The tattered cavalryman's uniform and wide handlebar mustache revealed the man's identity. Semyon Budyonny, that Bolshevik killed during the charge on Brasks. With a sword to his throat was another man whose face wasn't revealed, but he had the build of a typical black army soldier. Squinting at the details, Fyodor could not make out the man's identity. Fyodor had been there, at the charge, the high water of the black army's fight against the Bolsheviks to the east, firing his old bolt action... Uh, at the horses Budyod Bud Semyon Budyoni uh, had uh, headed the charge and he was thrown off his horse when a stray bullet hit the um, hit the brute's torso as the black army beat off the reds at the end of it all Galenskov shot Budyoni in the head the news carried through the region the devil of Bratsk was dead uh, when, why then, Pyotr thought, was some anonymous soldier executing Budyoni, and not Yuri? It took a moment, but it dawned on Pyotr. Stepanov. Stepanov, that old bastard wasn't trying to trumpet Yuri's achievements. He was trying to trumpet the Black Armies. No better than Bukharin. One day we'll use them to wipe our asses. So, yeah, Budyoni was a, was a real guy. Um, you know, good mustache, certainly. Um, old old. He actually still would have been alive in our own timeline by now. Um, lived to be almost 100. Uh, fought in the Russian Civil War. He was in the Polish War. And World War II, for that matter. So, the guy got around. Got, um... Hmm. Got three, uh... I think he got three Hero of the Soviet Union Awards, which I think is second only to Zukov, who got four. Okay, more aluminum. More, 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 more. Keep it coming, Hungry. Keep it coming, love. Keep it coming, love. Whoa! whoa, whoa. What is this? Tokyo stand up. Okay, so what we just did is uh, the Dibblerations. How is this land going to be 
uh, governed. In order to shape the future of our territory, we must carefully balance the idealism of the original black army with the necessities and responsibilities of great power. Shall Stefanov seize unquestioned control, guiding our territory towards further triumph, but risking backlash for his challenge to our final founding ideas? Or should he bide his time, acting with subtlety and paying the proper respect to the traditions which have brought us so far? This choice may determine the future of Siberia. And we's going to flip for it. Despot. Despot, but not helpless. So, I guess that'll be like we do the open secret. Um, anarchy remains, or the scoundrel of anarchy is dead. Stepanov will revive the state. Yep. There are times when gradualism is called for. When a course of action that must be taken with the utmost precaution, lest that course become uncontrollable. This is not one of those times. The vast territories of Siberia which have come under our control must be broken to the will of Stepanov. Otherwise, the rabble of the Black Army will come under the control of men like Valentiv. This cannot happen. We must take control of the army and assert control over the BA, the communes, and all within our territory. The people will all say that we are dictators in the clothing of anarchists. But if we triumph, it won't matter what they say. Great. Isn't that nice for them? Okay. The next few moments will decide the rest of your life. Stepanov took a uh, drag of the last cigarette in the pack. He had not yet become the hedonistic man authoritarians often became, but he graced himself with subtle luxuries. The cigarette wasn't locally produced, not out of one of those shitty tobacco farms outside the city. This was a real American smoke, Virginian ma Virginia made. When he inhaled the smoke for just a fleeting moment, he doubted that communes could ever be successful. After all, if some capitalist plantations of Virginia could make this, what did that say about a few Russian nitwits toiling in the workplace democracy? There was a ring of the phone. Uh, picked up the phone. There was an accent from Moscow. Probably fled after the war. He spoke with a quiver in his voice. Sir, I speak on behalf of Marshal Valentev. The Marshal kindly requests you stand down and cooperate in the restoration of anarchy. Stepanov uh, considered his options. Either he was to give in and perhaps lose his life in a Siberian prison, or he was to stand in defiance of Valentev. And if he stood in defiance, who knew what lay in store? So uh, Valentev is... Uh, which one's Valentev, actually? I forget. This guy, yeah, with the goggles. Uh, so he, he stood in defiance. Valentev heard the phone ring and his heart skipped. Could this be it? The moment where for once they won? They could stop fighting and pushing and rest. Rest for once. No more stressing about statism or despots or death in the name of life. Just rest. Picked up the phone and his heart skipped again. He wasn't prepared for this response. He hadn't thought he would be called on his bluff. He didn't have the men, the money, to fight a war. God, how could he be so stupid? These next words from Stepanov ripped the man's heart out. His idealism. His hope. How about we forget about this and you retire to your DACA? Alright, this is going to hurt our stability. We can keep the generals in check. We got Okay, these are a bunch of events. I don't know what they all do. But I see army professionalism down there, so let's go grab that. Because we are a ways from getting it better right now. General Assembly has been a useful tool for maintaining power in Siberia. However, it is only useful up to a point. Too much dissent and disunity spilling out of the Assembly would risk a major risk to our political efforts. Therefore, we must dissolve the General Assembly and assume greater powers for ourselves. Got to, you know, you got to. Get, get the that improving. Uh, it'll be faster if we get these out now. Great. That'll do it. Awesome. Okay. Uh, how many more days on this freaking unification? 18 more days. 18 more days of us going into the hole. Yeah, the weekly change, 2% a week because of all these integrations we're doing at once. It all came down to these next few moments. Years of waiting, planning, preparing, of putting up with Galenskov's companion nonsense, of selecting the right soldiers, even making sure the weather was right. Stepanov had already had to call this off twice already because of rain. But the weather had held up today and the General Assembly was crowded. It had to be today or it would never happen. Companion Stepanov, you still have not explained what happened to Companion Yuri Galenskov. He was under your protection. His disappearance has concerned a great many in this assembly. The words snapped Stepanov back to reality as he stared at the many faces of the assembly, while staring back at him intently, waiting for an answer. He looked at his notes, a long speech decrying Yuri, 
pointing out his many failures and general lack of intelligence, claiming his disappearance was that overzealous child's own fault. But that wasn't Stepanov's style. It never had been. Comrades. Stepanov grinned as the hated term caused a sea of disgust amongst those in the assembly. I don't have time for the tragic f uh, to answer. I don't have to answer for the tragic fate of Comrade Yuri, because as of this moment, this assembly is disbanded. He pushed a button hidden underneath the podium. Companion Stepanov, what is this status madness? An assemblyman asked right before dozens of members of the Black Army poured into the room. A wave of relief hit Stepanov as he gripped the podium. This was a moment he had pictured for so long. Part of him had never believed it would happen, and yet here it was. One of the assemblymen rose to his feet. This is a betrayal, Stepanov, of the free territories, and all... One of the soldiers dragged him back down to his seat, securing his silence with the butt of her rifle. <sighs> Sorry, scratching. Uh, Stepanov grabbed the microphone. It is net regretful that such... Wait, what? Okay, there we go. It is regretful that such drastic actions have become necessary, he lied. But the General Assembly has constantly shown itself incapable of managing the free territory. The Security Council will do just fine without you. Now, if you'll so cooperate with these soldiers as they escort you out of the room, we can help ensure this transition is peaceful and orderly. Failure to cooperate would be inadvisable, comrade. This is very, uh, you know, Napoleon's coup, right? That's, I'm getting big vibes off of it. The one in 1799. Which is when some people say the French Revolution ended. Some say it had already ended. Some say, uh... Hold on. What do we want to do here? Yeah, let's get a couple more civilian fire. Some say it had already ended. Some say that that was not, in fact, the end. But the, the coup of 18th of Brumaire. Because Brumaire was one of the, um the months of, uh, um, you know, the revolutionary calendar, which is a fun calendar. It's an interesting one. Uh, okay, here we go. Let's do another flip. So wait, which goes where? I think these are both despotic. Uh, sack the teacher, introduce the officer, or conscription lotteries. Uh, we'll say despot on the right, anarchy on the left, okay? Anarchy, conscription lotteries, all true anarchists must be willing to lay down their lives for the cause of the Black Army. If one is unwilling to die for their commune and for the good of all their peers, then there must be consequences. And the conscription process, regrettable though it may be, is one such consequence. In communities where recruitment of volunteers is insufficient, we will hold lotteries to draft new levies for the struggle against outside tyrants. It will certainly save some money on higher education. So we go to a one-year draft, which is uh, going to help the recruiting population, but it's going to hurt political power gain and organization recovery rates, stability, war support. So there's pros and the cons. Gosh, stability down to 52 already. This is crazy. But we just got all of the coring done, so we have all the things, uh, including let's maybe make some more air assault divisions. Okay, you know what? We don't need this many. Better industrial equipment. Very nice. Oh, we still is the music still off or no, it's just kinda of quiet. Okay. Very, very good. Uh so right now we're getting ooh, very, very little political power a day though. I think after we do conscription we might wait a little bit just so I can prepare for the war. Cause let's see, this is gonna take well that's two weeks. Okay, so one month, two, three Four. So that puts us up to 1970. Not e or yeah, roughly 1970. Started them. I think we got to be in 71 before we can go west. Death of Ho Chi Minh. Ho 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 Chi Minh. Okay. Good. Good. Uh, we got some free dockyards here. I don't know, make convoys or something? Who cares? Oh, oh, uh, okay. This is probably the last event, we'll call it a day. No, no, I won't go! Life was never perfect. It was hard, toiling, deadly, and most of all, short. 
But in Siberia and these wastes, it was a step closer to perfect. The work was difficult, mucking barns and sowing seeds. Out there, though, it was beautiful. It never ceased being beautiful. The slow, meandering delta, uh, the chilly wind on a summer morning, the biting cold in the winter, the snow-capped mountains just peeking over the horizon. Every day was rich, unchanging, blowing like the wind. He could live like this forever. They came at night in a big, rumbling military truck. They rolled right up the door and in their big boots marched to it and started knocking. It never stopped knocking. She could hear he could still hear he could hear it still today. Then they pushed the door down and pulled him away. He screamed. He was only a boy. He wasn't ready to die for his country. And his mother screamed. His father tried to fight back for a few minutes, but a gun butt to the face silenced him. He had to drag him out of the house, kicking and screaming for his life. They threw him into the back of the truck. He couldn't stop crying with the blindfold over his head. He cried and cried and cried, always hearing that knocking. Was it even there anymore? Eventually, life faded to sleep and dream. He dreamed of that knocking and his mother's scream. Well, that's it for today, everybody. I'm Conquering History Games. Thank you very much for joining me. And I will uh, see you in the next episode. Take care. Spike your hair. Bye.